presenter is going to be giving a bio talk. Her name is Lori Rumker, and she is going to talk about the effect of culture azonicity on prochlorococcus phage infection kinetics. Thank you, Kate. Yes, this afternoon I'll be speaking about an organism called Prochlorococcus, and specifically about the possible role of heterotrophic bacteria on the infection kinetics of Prochlorococcus. Prochlorococcus is a marine cyanobacteria, a phytoplankton. It contributes about 20% of the world's oxygen and is possibly one of the most abundant microorganisms on the Earth. It also contributes significantly to primary production and photosynthetic biomass in the ocean and thus has really important roles in global nutrient cycling and climate regulation. One group of organisms that Prochlorococcus interacts with in the oceans are called phages. And these phages essentially inject their DNA into the host cell and then kind of hijack the host system to reproduce the phages. This has two important implications for the Prochlorococcus cells. The first of which is to cause host cell mortality because when the phages are released, the cells are lysed or burst, which kills them. The other important implication is that phages facilitate horizontal gene transfer, for, gene transfer for the hosts. This happens through many ways, some of which are when the phages inject their DNA into the cell and then essentially get turned off, depositing that DNA in the cell. Otherwise, it can happen when phages that are released from the cell take the host DNA with them. Thus, the phages have been suggested to help the prochlorococcus cells adapt and evolve. So this brings me to my question, which is the possible role of heterotrophic bacteria on the infection, kin infection kinetics. The heterotrophs of, are of concern in this equation because azeonic cultures are very difficult to produce and maintain in the laboratory environment. Thus, some of the previous research that's been conducted with phages has been performed under questionable or possibly compromised azeonic conditions. Thus, however, the role of these heterotrophs possibly affecting those results hasn't been investigated. So that's where my research came in. The hypothesis and the hope was that the phages would have no effect on the infection kinetics. However, the possibilities for irreversible binding of the phages to the heterotroph cells as opposed to the prochlorococcus cells or other unanticipated interactions are still out there and need to be addressed. So to do this, I first compared the growth rates of several different types of heterotroph inoculation um, to azeonic cultures. And then from that, I was able to select the heterotrophs that I wanted to use in the infection. I then infected the cells with the azenic and heterotroph inoculated cultures, or infected the phage on the azenic and heterotroph inoculated cultures, and then sampled over a 14-hour period to determine the phage populations and the bacterial cell populations over time. The first step of that was this growth rate comparison. I needed to compare the growth rates because growth rate affects the number of cells that are in the cultures, which this therefore affects the ratio of infective phage to bacterial cells, and thus the infection kinetics. However, at the same time, I wanted to maximize the number of heterotrophs that were in my heterotroph contaminated conditions to maximize the realistic aspect of that condition, and also the possibility that one of those heterotrophs might have some impact on the infection kinetics. This growth rate step also gave me the opportunity to transfer the cells from the light, dark growth cycle they had been growing under into a constant like incubator, which desynchronized the cell cycles and increased the opportunity that the cells would be, at least a portion of the cells would be infective at the time of the infection. So to compare the growth rates, I monitored bulk fluorescence over time and found that the two native cultures or the cultures that were essentially inoculated with a slew of unknown, not enumerated heterotrophs, were too dissimilar from the azeonic condition. However, the cultures that were con 
contaminated with one single isolated heterotroph called C1, or four isolated heterotrophs, which I called a cocktail, were very similar in growth rate to the azenic culture. Thus, those two were selected for flow cytometric analyses to determine the exact growth rates. I had to use this flow cytometric analyses because fluorescence doesn't take into account the amount of light produced by individual cells. And from these flow cytometric analyses, I was able to pick azenic B and cocktail B as the two cultures to use for my infection. So once I had selected those, I was ready to perform the infection, which I conducted in a 96-well plate using the MED4 prochlorococcus strain and its phage counterpart, PSSP7. I, under each of those experimental conditions, the azenic and the heterotroph inoculated, I conducted the experiment under three MOIs, or multiplicities of infection, which is the ratio, ratio of infective phage to the prochlorococcus cells. And those conditions were X, X over 10, and X over 100 from the original concentration of those dilutions, in addition to a no phage control. Also, those were all inoculated in biological triplicate. So after an hour of incubation, I was ready to perform the sampling, and I diluted all of the cultures from the infection plate into spent media to reduce the risk of secondary infection, which would have interfered with my results. At each of the sampling intervals, I took a sample for flow cytometry that was fixed with glutaraldehyde, and then another sample into a filter plate to remove the prochlorococcus cells and isolate the phage, which were then diluted into tris and inoculated into two qPCR plates. The first of the analyses that I performed was a qPCR analysis to look at the phage counts over time. And my three MOIs, the X, X over 10, and X over 100, were very nicely distributed. And under all of those conditions, the phage were initially absorbed into the bacterial cells. And then after a lysis point, or that bursting point, of about five hours, the phage were then released. However, under all of these conditions, the heterotroph inoculated cultures were not significantly different from the azenic cultures. I also performed flow cytometric analyses to look at the bacterial populations over time. Flow cytometry essentially uses a combination of fluidics and lasers to look at the properties of individual cells. And in the instance of my research, I use that to look at the number of cells that were in the solutions. My flow cytometric charts produce three distinct populations, which are correlated to live MED4 cells, dead cell debris, and the heterotrophs based on the correlations with the different conditions that they were produced by. And I selected and gated the live MED4 cells to look at in my analyses. And I found that while those cells not infected with phage continued or maintained were essentially at the same population, those infected with phage deteriorated very rapidly after a lysis point or that same bursting point that correlated very nicely with my qPCR results. And also, Another correlation between these results and the qPCR results was that there was no difference, essentially, between the heterotroph inoculated cultures and the azenic cultures. So that led me to conclude overall that the heterotrophs had no significant effect on the infection kinetics. And that had implications for both our understanding of the natural environment and also for laboratory protocol. These results suggested that the PSSP7 phage had very high host specificity or was selectively attacking the prochlorococcus cells as opposed to the heterotrophs. This research also validates the previous research that was done in the lab under unknown or, or possibly compromised azenic conditions. What I'd like to do next was to continue my flow cytometry analyses, which are compromised due to time constraints. And I'd also like to DNA sequence the heterotrophs that I used to find out what kind of cells they were. I'd also like to look at the other heterotroph and prochlorococcus interactions, specifically looking at how the heterotroph populations changed over time from my flow cytometry analysis, because they formed such a nice distinct population, to see if they might increase after the prochlorococcus cells were lysing, to see if that lysis might have released nutrients for the heterotrophs to utilize. That would also suggest other things about the relationship between the heterotrophs, phage, and prochlorococcus. Finally, I'd like to thank the Chisholm Laboratory at MIT where I worked, my mentors, my sponsors, my RSI tutor, Dr. Ann Lai, 
Um, my sponsors, Ms. Allison Coe, Ms. Sarah Rogensack, and Ms. Jessica Thompson, um, Ms. Katra Foyz Moniz, and also Professor Penny Chisholm, and especially my sponsors, the Research Science Institute, the Center for Excellence and Education, and also MIT. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Lori? Yeah. Could you go to the slide, the QPCR uh, phage count slide? Yes. Okay. In that uh, tan curve, why is there that uh, kind of spike uh, around uh, uh, 11, 12 hours? Absolutely. The question is why there's a spike in the tan curve shown around 11 or 12 hours. Yeah, that, those two bottom lines correlate to the phage populations in the X over 100 dilution. And initially when I saw these results, I thought it might have happened due to a secondary infection, which I was trying to avoid from that dilution. But I think it can be attributed to sampling error, especially because those numbers are so similar to the other dilution that was happening at the same time. So it's likely that pipetting error transferred the samples from the one dilution into the well, corresponding well for the other. Are there any more questions from the judges? Sorry, All right. If it included the other well, then why, why are not the rest of the results the same? Sure. The question is, if, there was, if it polluted the other well, why are the rest of the results not the same? Yeah, I thought that it didn't necessarily pollute the well, not that I um, transferred sample from one well into the other, but just that I sampled essentially from the wrong well, because mm -hmm. this was happening over a 14-hour day sampling period. <laughs> <laughs> kind of <laughs> get a little loopy towards the end, yeah. <laughs> Are there any, there we go. You used the term biological triplicate. I know triplicate means there are three of something, but what, what's biological triplicate mean? Mm -hmm. um, the uh, question is asking for a definition of biological triplicate. Mm -hmm. Triplicate, the, there's um, kind of fuzzy lines in some uh, in this area of research between the biological replication and the technical replication or triplication. Um, and I used both in my study. Biological in this case indicated that all of those three were initially cultured separately. So the cultures were grown in the same way but they were inoculated, like they were infected separately. Whereas in my technical replicates, as I was sampling, I also sampled twice from each well. So that isolates the error from either the growth or from the analyses with the different kinds of machinery. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm not an expert, but can you talk a little bit about other related work? What's the you know, current state of the art? How does this fit, body of work fit in? Sure. Um, the question is about how does this work fit into the body of work relating to it? Yeah. Well, my research was essentially addressing a hole that's kind of been bouncing around in the general phage research. Um, which was the possible influence of those heterotrophs. But the phage research as a whole has basically been looking at Prochlorococcus as an example of evolution in the oceans, because as a um, bacterium, it's easier to sequence than other organisms, and also because it divides rapidly, it's easy to see those transitions. Um, so that's why the phage has been of such interest, because of its um, effects on the horizontal gene transfer. All right, that's all the time we have for questions. Thank you.